Have you ever wanted to make an epic map wall in your base only to find yourself getting lost either in the mapping process itself or when trying to place all of the individual map pieces together? In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to organize your maps so you can save yourself time and avoid frustration when creating your perfect map wall project. All right, so let's say we've made this nice two by two map wall where we've started in the top right corner, making this map one, this is map two, map three and four, so going in a clockwise direction. But in actuality, we want to extend this a little bit more, and we want to include the full island, so we want to add two maps here. And so now we have the whole island. But now our naming convention from the game is just messed up, because now this is map one, two, three, four, this is five and six. So one thing we could do is we could rename these maps such that we keep our clockwise order. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But the problem with this is that as we continue to extend this map and expand the map wall, this just makes it more and more complicated because now we have to keep renaming this and say if this is four by four, now we have to do this zigzag pattern to map everything in a sequential manner and also remember the path order in which we made these maps. This information is thus required in order to place the maps in their proper orientation relative to one another. In other words, you can't just have a chest full of maps like this named with a default convention and know where to place them without putting them on an item frame or remembering the path order you took to create these maps, assuming you've named them all. Moreover, two pieces of map can look really similar, especially in biomes like the ocean, jungle, or even the end. And if you have more than one location you've mapped, for example, we have this Mushroom Island over here, and we have a base to the north, this now becomes a three-dimensional information problem because now you have different locations, and if you consider the zoom levels, that's another dimension of information. All these things you have to remember, assuming you're using the default naming system. And as we know, that's not going to work because this assumes that everything was made in perfect sequential order, and we know this is totally unrealistic in any survival world where you don't know exactly where the borders of everything lie. And planning out such a big project before you're even starting the world, that takes a lot of time. Of course, we could use the anvil to remove a little bit of this ambiguity. So if we wanted to name this Mushroom Island 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., that would kind of work. But it still necessitates remembering the path information because we only have one piece of information that is the numerical order even if we are adding the location information as well. So what is our solution? I thought about this for a long time, and the answer is kind of simple. We add more dimensional information in the form of coordinates. That's right, the solution to this problem was intrinsic to the game all along. In Minecraft, the coordinate system is assigned such that this axis is the Z, and then the horizontal axis is the X. And by the conventions that you get when you press F3, the north is negative Z, the east is positive X, south is positive Z, and west is negative X. Personally, I find this confusing as the Cartesian coordinate system that I learned in school had the convention such that the horizontal axis was X and the vertical axis was Y. By extension, the right direction was positive X with the left being negative. And likewise, the Y vertical axis was oriented such that the up direction is positive and down is negative. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the system that I learned in school as it's more familiar to me and it's what I remember. But if you're used to the axis and I guess orientation of the Minecraft coordinate system, then by all means use that system. Whatever is easiest for you to remember is what I would recommend. And it's not so much about how the axes are oriented, it's what you can remember without having to look up other information. Okay, so how do we put this into practice? So let's say we denote the center of this map is right here, so that is zero, zero. So if we take this map and we name it as such, so if we go by the coordinate system, so this would be positive one, one, so now we know that this is 1, 1. So positive x and positive y. And so then we can apply the same treatment to these other maps. Now we have 1, 1 in the top right, 1, negative 1 in the bottom right, negative 1, negative 1, as both values of x and y are negative, and then negative 1 and positive 1. 
And so now the beauty of this system is that, say we just like picked up these two map pieces from the chest. Okay, so this one, positive one. So go right one and then negative two, one, two. That's it. Likewise for this one, negative one, negative two, right there. And so now rather than say, okay, I don't really remember the order of these maps. What you have now is a very simple way to organize them spatially within the chest as well. And just like that, we've organized the map in the right order as it would go there. And just to, I guess, prove this. <laughs> Center there, there, there. One, negative one. Okay, so then that would be here. Negative one, negative one. You get the idea. Done. So while this seems like a lot of effort for a map this small, you can see that when you want to make a map wall, say the size of this monstrosity, it becomes a lot more clear and obvious what you need to do. So again, assigning this as the center, okay, one, 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 negative two, down here, negative one, one, there, one, negative one, there, negative one, negative two, negative one, one. And right away, we have the correct order, just like that. And so when you're making a big map wall like this, it's really, really, really easy to get confused as to where things go. Like for example, I couldn't tell you if that's the right map or not because this doesn't look like it fits there. And so I've clearly made a mistake in this area here. But with this naming convention, what's really powerful is that say we go to this coordinate, okay, we know that this is here. And so we're trying to figure out where all of these maps are relative to each other. And after moving to the left of negative one, one, we can see that this map belongs right next to it. So we automatically know this is minus two positive one, and we can name this out in the field, if you will, in order to avoid more ambiguity. And likewise, if we go up here, we now know that this is above it. Okay, so in the coordinate system, this is minus one, one, minus two, one. So this is minus two, two. And it becomes a lot easier to deconvolute where the maps are relative to each other once you have this naming convention and geospatial information integrated into the map name. And so with this information, you can come back and you're like, okay, so this is minus one, one, and then this map 32, whatever that means, right, is now going to be Musher minus two, one, which makes sense because we're going to the left and we have our convention as such, we can figure it out and continue to just like really simplify our life by doing this. So this would be minus two, two, because we're going up. And then this would be minus one, two. And so now that we have these named, we can really just quickly place them and figure out the order. Even when there's no pictorial information on the map that gives you any clue as to where this goes whatsoever. And so if you want to get even more specific, you can add things like the location as well as the zoom information to the naming convention when combining it with the coordinate system. Long sentence. But see here, I have the overworld in a fully zoomed out or zoom level four scale, and I've already went ahead and mapped out these areas. But if say I wanted to include the aforementioned information to the names, I would just simply take this and just add, let's just say overworld Z4 for the zoom four to include all four pieces of information and really remove the ambiguity as to what exactly this map is, say if you're taking it out of a chest, for example. And naturally, you could also extend this to map art as well, if you are, say, brave enough to <laughs> make a map art larger than 2x2. Two two. And if, if you do, wow, kudos. That's really impressive. I will provide the caveat that this method is a little awkward when it comes to numbering odd-numbered map walls. Though I have not tried this in practice, you could name your center map, so this one, zero, zero, and just add zero values to both axes. So if you have a three by three map wall, from left to right, this middle row becomes negative one, zero, 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 and one, zero. And likewise, from top to bottom, the center column becomes zero, one, zero, zero, and zero, negative one. Or you could just move the center of your map such that the center and the origin are no longer at the same point, if you're okay with that. So with that, I hope you can benefit from this naming system, 
and its implementation saves you loads of time as you make giant map walls. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed the content, please consider dropping a like. Also, if you would like to see similar videos to this, or are just a general fan of Survival Let's Play series, consider subscribing and check out my survival series where we just recently beat the Ender Dragon. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful week, take care, and I'll see you next time.